All right, my name is Luther Reynolds, Chief of Police, City of Charleston. We have a violent crime problem in our nation. We have a violent crime problem in our state, and we have a violent crime problem in the Low Country region. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. 2019, the numbers went up. The numbers went up in 2020. It was the highest recorded in the state of South Carolina. Chief Keel did a, a press conference recently and talked about we started collecting data in 1960, and this year, 2020, last year, was the highest number of homicides, shootings, and violence in this state. 2021 is on record to be much worse. Significant increases from 19 to 20. So as I stand here on this corner, I want to bring attention to these shootings. I want to put a face on some of these victims. They all involve something to the degree of gangs, guns, and things like retaliations, drugs, and, and we're getting younger and younger people that are involved in these crimes. It's everyone's responsibility. This is not just a police problem. I stand here with our council member, Robert Mitchell, who's on this corner in this community every day, born and raised here, been here his whole life, and Edward Jones and other community members. I literally, just today, from one to about four o'clock, was in a meeting in North Charleston with Representative Gilliard and a variety of other leaders talking about violence. We just talked about that. No sooner did I leave the parking lot, I got a phone call that we had five shot right here in this community, about a block or, or feet from where we're standing right now. Five people shot, two critically. So what does that mean to me? That means more grieving mothers, and if you've been out on any of these crime scenes, you, you've heard the sound of a wailing mother's voice. And I promise you, if you've heard it, you'll never get it out of your mind. And I met with a mother today, Monica Jefferson, who spoke very eloquently about her son Malcolm, who was killed on his 18th birthday. And he was born in 1995, and he was killed about eight years ago. And his case was never solved. We need people to get involved. We need people to be witnesses. We need people to provide information. We need people to mentor youth. There's a whole lot of things that we need to make sure that we more adequately address these problems. And number one, that we save lives, that we reduce the number of victims and these families that are impacted by these violent crimes. So at about 4.50 today, at Johnson and Hanover, in this area where we're standing, we actually got a call and, and responded here uh, so quickly that we actually saw a vehicle that was speeding away from the scene, thought they were involved, and they were actually a person that was shot, followed them to the hospital and rendered aid to them. Our officers actually put chest seals on the victim and rendered advanced trauma care until they got to the emergency room. Five victims, two critical, Still don't know the condition. At least one of them is in surgery right now as we stand here. What's my message? Some of these shootings right here in these communities have involved as many as over 50 shell casings in one single shooting. 40 shell casings, 30 shell casings, two, three, four weapons, long guns, high-powered ammunition. I've seen the victims. And let me tell you what a long gun does to somebody's extremity. It's not a pretty sight. It's something you might see on the battlefield, in the war zone. And it's causing trauma, and it's causing death, and the numbers are going up. I will tell you, and I speak, I think, for much of our community, the communities are tired of this. They're angry, they're upset, and they're tired of this. And let me tell you, one of the, I, I hear, what's the solution, Chief? And I will tell you, it's a small number of repeat, violent, armed criminal offenders that are committing these crimes. It's a small number, and we're arresting them. Our case closure rate is very high, and we arrest them, and they're not staying in jail. They're getting out almost every single time, and I'm tired of it, because what happens when they get out? They continue the crime and the victimization and the violence. Somebody needs to step up and keep these people in jail. And we need to do that as a region, and our judges need to be a part of this conversation, and everybody needs to be a part of this to reduce this violence and save lives. 
These violent offenders, these trigger pullers, these hardened criminals have no concern about anybody else but themselves, their drug trade, their gangs, and a variety of other self-serving things. They don't care about our communities, they don't care about our youth, they don't care about the families that are impacted and the neighborhoods that are impacted by their actions. I'm going to end here and I'm going to ask our communities to get involved. If you have information, provide it. You can call our Crime Solvers number at 554-1111. Call Crime Solvers to provide information. You can do that anonymously. Reach out and mentor one of our youths. Be a positive influence. Get involved. Get engaged. Get involved in sports activities. It changes people's lives. Get involved and be a part of the solution. We have to make things better. This is not an acceptable outcome. This neighborhood, these families, these communities deserve our best. When I stand here in scenes like this, on this side of the crime scene tape, and I see young children somehow thinking this is normal, that's a problem. We have young kids in this community that have PTSD. And many of them, the next day after they, they witness something like this, they have to go take a test in school. Think about your children having to do that. Go take a test in school, one of the mandatory placement tests or a math test or whatever it is, and they're afraid a bullet's going to come flying through the window. They can't sleep. They've got PTSD. That trauma has a cascading generational effect, and it has to stop, and we all have to be a part of the solution. With that, if I can, I'll answer your questions. Any, Thank you for being here. Any word on any suspects, Chief? It just happened. We're still investigating it, um, and, and our investigators are canvassing. Uh, they're interviewing people. They'll look at things like videos. Um, they'll get any kind of evidence that they can get. Forensics, I mean, they're still working on that as we speak, just not far from here. Uh, so as we get more information, we'll share that. Uh, but the biggest thing that I would add for the community is if anybody knows if anybody has information, we, we get out in the community and we have fun events and we, we talk about uh, community engagement and making sure that we're working together. Part of that is taking a shared responsibility. And part of that is providing information and helping us solve these crimes. And, and, and I tell you what, um, there's, we're doing a lot of good things, but there's more that we need to do. Why do you think those shooting numbers are getting worse? Why? My personal uh, feeling is COVID and a variety of other things have had an impact on our nation. Um, but I'll tell you, for me, I think and when you, you ask what can we do about it, these violent criminal offenders, repeat offenders who have a lengthy history of violence, who have guns, who in many cases are prohibited from carrying guns. Let's say we were here three hours ago and whoever was responsible for this violent crime and I'm, thank you, for, we're lucky to have a mayor who supports the police, and, and I'm glad that you're out here, Mayor, thank you. We have, if we had arrested that person who did this shooting, or persons, before this happened, you'd say, oh, great job, Chief. You, you got a criminal off the street. You got somebody who was, had guns, who had a lengthy, violent criminal history. Man, you're doing your job. You're being proactive. Good, good work. And I would say those people would be out before you could blink, even with a lengthy criminal history, and that is a key outcome that has to change. So if we keep these small number of violent repeat criminal offenders in jail, I promise you our violent crime will plummet. That's a problem around the country. It's not unique only to here. With COVID, the courts shut down to a large degree. Um, there was no jury trials. There was a whole lot of things that happened, but we have to better triage, prioritize, and get better outcomes on these violent criminals. They need to go to jail, and they need to stay there. And that will have a huge mitigating effect on this violence. What do you think the odds are that this person has been arrested for something similar? 100% guaranteed. Guaranteed. We don't even know who it is yet, but I can promise you they are a repeat offender. They've had violence in their past. They're related to the drug trade. They're related to a gang. They're related to some form of retaliation and some level of beef. That is almost a guarantee. And I don't, I, we, we're not even very far along in our investigation, but that would be my guess. 
Go ahead. Specific to this incident, Chief, did it happen inside, outside? You're mentioning youthful offenders. Were they young people? Yeah, that we, we, we're not that far along yet. We'll share that when we get it. Um, I can tell you that it was mostly outside. Again, we're still investigating. Sometimes they kind of start inside and end outside or vice versa. So we're looking at the crime scene, looking at things like shell casings and all those types of things. How many different scenes are you looking at? Because I can see crime tape up in a few different places. There's always multiple scenes. The hospital, the surgery, um, the scenes here, I say plural, there are multiple scenes, always are, um, vehicles, etc. Anything else? What role do judges play in keeping these criminals behind bars? They play a very significant role. Um, and what I'm seeing and what I'm experiencing is that we have these violent criminal offenders that we're talking about. They're armed. They have a criminal history a mile long in some cases. They're reoffending. They're using guns in their offenses. They're shooting people. In some cases, they've committed murders. And those people are being let out on bond. In many of those cases, which I would disagree with that decision, it's a judge's prerogative. That's their decision. They then reoffend. They violate all of their bond restrictions, and they still are not put in jail. There are things like GPS monitors. There's things like bond. Uh, and I encourage you to look at that, because I think it's worthy of, of a story. And I will tell you, we'll have a shooting here, and we'll say, hey, where was so-and-so? They're, they're out on bond. They have a GPS ankle bracelet on. Can you tell us where they were at during the time of the shooting? Oh, we just checked. The batteries ran out three weeks ago. Oh, oh we, we haven't activated that yet. How does that happen? I don't know. Good question. But I will tell you, that's what leads to outcomes like today. There's a lack of accountability. There's a lack of outcomes, and I'm tired of it. It's getting old. I'm tired of being at these scenes. I'm tired of talking to mothers who are losing their children. I talked to, we had a double homicide last week. And I will tell you, I talked to a father and I talked to a mother that day. I saw a mother who was there grieving, who, who was screaming because she just got notified because she lost her son. Nobody's talking about it. I am. We all need to talk about it. We all need to have anger about this issue and we need to get better outcomes. Um, were any weapons obtained from the scene, and if so, how many? I, we, we haven't gotten that far along yet. Thanks. Good, mentioned, good question. You mentioned long rifles earlier. Was a long rifle used in this? I haven't gotten that far yet. Many of our cases, long guns are being used, 762 rounds, rifle rounds. If you know much about ammunition, it literally will blow your leg off, and we've had that happen right here in the city of Charleston had people's heads blown off with a long gun, rifle round. Nobody's talking about that. We need to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you all for coming out. Mayor, do you, you want to? Yeah, Mr. No, Mayor. Good. Mr. Mayor, what do you think can be, can be done? Well, I'm here to support Chief Reynolds and our department. They're an amazing team. Councilmember Mitchell and I are here. We share his anger, his outrage at, at this increase in gun violence. It's not just Charleston, it's all over uh, the, the United States of America. Every city in America is seeing this kind of increase in gun violence, and there's no excuse for it. But uh, you have to ask your question. Ask the question: Is 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 life so cheap in Charleston that people just pull out a gun over almost nothing to kill one another? Come on, citizens. Let's come on, families. Let's 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 get drilled down on this issue with our with our children, with our families, with our friends, with our cousins, and and talk about this issue of guns and the use of them in our streets. It's just not acceptable. I agree with the chief. Thank you. What is council doing to uh, try and help curb this? Councilmember Mitchell is here. Well, we, we at City Council, we try as much as possible to try to look at crimes. And we are, like the chief said, we are getting very tired of seeing young people losing their life. 
Like I always tell them on the streets, I'm out here every night, sometime to one or two o'clock in the morning, even Mr. Jones is out here. And we are getting tired seeing this because no one is going to come back from the dead. And that's what I tell them. But they're using these guns in retaliation, but we, they have to stop. They just have to stop in the, in, in the community. If you see something, then you need to say something. They don't want to talk about it, but you have to talk, start talking about this when you're seeing that. I see mothers here crying, like the chief stated, and I'm, get, I'm tired seeing it myself. I see it out there. I have kids. I have grands. I don't want to see them be laying in the street like this. When you're shooting, innocent people get shot. You got young kids out there that was in the streets also. They could have gotten shot. No one knows. Bullet don't have a name on it. So we have to stop it. We have to get together. This community has to change. People have to get together and start saying something when they see something. We have to work together and stop with this crime going. The policemen can do as much as they possibly can. But the community can do more, too, if they step up to the plate. The community have to take over where they're living. The people have to take over where they're living. And they got to, if they're tired of it, then they have to make a difference, too. But these young people have to know that they have to stop with this gun violence and stop with the retaliation because it's just happening because of friends are happening. They have to learn this and stop it. And until that happened, I don't see it's going to I don't see it stopping. That is my take on it, my personal opinion on it. Thank you. Thank you for the Thank time. You. Thank you all.